My name is Bogdan Pashka, and I work for Intel in the Programmable Solutions Group. My main expertise is designing efficient arithmetic operators for FPGAs. In this talk, I will give an overview of the paper entitled Folded Integer Multiplication for FPGAs. The results presented here are joint work with my colleague and co-author Martin Langhammer. So let's get started. First, I want to briefly cover the plan of this talk. After presenting the context for this work, I will give a brief overview of large multiplier decomposition techniques, including the classical schoolbook and Karatsuba techniques. Next, using this information, we will transition to the construction of the folded integer multiplier. We will briefly cover functional unit selection, binding, storage allocation, and we will show how an efficient modular schedule can be constructed for this multiplier. Next, we will evaluate the performance of this multiplier focusing on a 2048-bit multiplication size. Finally, we will conclude. One of the main drivers for this work is the FPG implementation of cryptographic primitives such as those required for RSA. These include modular exponentiation, modular multiplication, and wide integer multiplication. The current key sizes for RSA to be considered secure begin at 2048 bits and this is only expected to grow in the future. The key sizes correlate directly with operand widths on which the cryptographic primitives operate. Currently, for 2048-bit key sizes, integer multipliers operate on 2048 bits. Implementing wide integer multipliers efficiently is challenging on FPGAs. On one hand, we have the more obvious problem of the high multiplier count. Using a schoolbook decomposition, a 1024-bit multiplier would require over 1,427-bit multipliers to implement. This is roughly one quarter of the total DSP count of a large strat extend device. Using more advanced techniques such as Karatsuba decreases this count by nearly 1,000 DSPs at the cost of more adders and a less regular structure. Then there is the less obvious problem of high um, number of white adders, which are required for aggregating the spatially distributed partial products. So it is exactly in this context that multiplier implementations which trade resources for throughput are interesting. This is also illustrated in this figure where the relative FPG implementation size is proportional to the multiplier drawing area and where the bottom multiplier inputs and outputs data only once every four cycles compared to the full rate regime of the top multiplier. So, so it is precisely this type of multi-cycle folded implementation that we will be exploring in this talk. Now, before we dive into the implementation details, let's have a quick look at some multiplier decomposition techniques. For this, we take two inputs, X and Y, which are n bits wide, and for which their product is 2 n bits wide. If the input operands are split into two k bit terms, then the product p can be written as shown here. Note that computing p requires 4 k bit multiplications. This decomposition method is known as schoolbook method and is known to have a quadratic complexity in terms of multiplier blocks required. A more advanced decomposition technique is Karatsuba's method. This technique requires computing an additional term, M2, based on two pre-computed sums, A0 and A1. The midterms in the two-way decomposition can now be expressed using the newly computed term M2 and the already computed terms M0 and M1. Karatsuba's technique allows expressing the same product P using only 3k bit multiplications, but requires an additional two additions and one subtraction. The same equation can also be expressed using a simplified directed acyclic graph. This particular graph corresponds to a 2048 bit multiplier. The exact operation bit widths are shown on the left, while on the right we can see the fixed point operand alignments. Note that all this information is typically stored in the graph, although for simplicity, we only show the node types, multipliers in blue and adders in red, and the operand widths on the edges. The same decomposition can be recursively applied on the multiplier nodes M0, N1, and M2, resulting in a graph shown on the right. The three 1024-bit multipliers are now replaced by nine 512-bit ones. This decomposition therefore allows implementing the 2048-bit multiplier by only using nine 512-bit multiplications. 
the remaining adder and subtracted nodes vary between 513 and 3072 bits as shown in the table. Given this two-level recursive decomposition, our goal is to build a folded multiplier implementation using only one of the nine 512-bit multipliers. Additionally, our goal for this implementation is to work at one-ninth of the throughput of the flat full-rate multiplier. This involves finding an efficient modular schedule for executing the blocks, such that a new multiplication can be issued every nine clock cycles. In the rest of this presentation, will show the steps for building this multi-cycle implementation. In terms of compute units, the folded implementation will use one multiplier. The size of this multiplier will be that of the widest of the nine and equals 514 bits. All nine multiplications will be executed sequentially on this physical multiplier. In terms of adders and subtractors, the two-level Karatsuba decomposition requires 20 such nodes, with sizes varying between 513 and 3072 bits. Since our goal is to be able to issue a new multiplication every nine cycles, we need sufficient physical units to be able to execute the 20 nodes in nine cycles. Naively, this would correspond to three units. However, in this work, we propose using only two such units. For the 2048-bit multiplier, these adder subtractor units will operate on 2052 bits. In conjunction with the two adder subtractor units, we will use the following graph transformations. First, merging. We can use wide physical adders for executing multiple narrow additions in parallel on the same physical unit. This is shown in the figure, where narrow 3-bit operands are summed to produce 4-bit wide results. A second, a third, then a fourth adder can be arranged such that some bits perfectly join, as shown here. Then, the 3-bit operands are padded with zeros to kill a carry into the upper bits of the adder, and thus avoiding invalidating the results. The technique exemplified on the 3-bit wide operands is used on the four nodes shown here, but with 512-bit wide inputs instead. The second pair of merge nodes is shown next. The corresponding operand relative uh, to x and y are shown on the right. Finally, a third pair of nodes is merged. The relative alignment of the original node outputs on the fused node outputs is shown on the right. The node merging based on the, the 2052-bit adder subtracted units reduces the total number of nodes to 15. As previously mentioned, the adder node producing the final result will be 3072 bits wide. This is wider than the adders we have selected for our implementation. Consequently, we will split this adder, A4, into two chained nodes, A4 and AF, as shown here. This splitting may not be the most obvious, as it also optimizes how the final result will be assembled from storage elements. The splitting of node A4 increases the node count from 15 to 16. The graph resulting from merging and splitting nodes is shown on the right. Note that the merge split nodes are color-coded and correspond to the nodes in the original graph, which is shown on the left. Having selected the functional units for the folded multiplier, the next task consists in the so-called binding, or in other words, assigning which operations execute on which unit. This step is typically part of the solution exploration loop, where several allocations may be tried before arriving at a solution. Fortunately for our folded multiplier, this is not necessary. An allocation which leads to a valid solution can therefore manually be found. The solution used in our case is shown here. We expect that other allocations which lead to similar solutions exist. Next, we tackle storage allocation. We store operation result in register files which are implemented in MLAB-based memories on Intel FPGAs. These memories have two ports, one dedicated to writing and the other to reading. One single MLAB has a capacity of 32 20-bit elements. A 2052-bit storage, which up to 32 elements, requires just above 100 MLAPs, or an equivalent of 1000 ALMs. As previously mentioned, we use these storage elements to store intermediary results throughout the execution. 
To avoid right arbitration and facilitate a static deterministic schedule, we only allow one functional unit to write to one storage element, although its output may be connected to multiple units. Storage element count it is also typically part of the solution exploration phase. However, in our case, we have determined that a pair of storage elements for each of the three functional units is sufficient for arriving at a solution. Storage allocation is similar to binding or allocating operations to functional units in the sense that outputs of operations now need to be assigned to storage elements. Due to scheduling constraints, we can pre-allocate the storage of some nodes. Particularly, we can pre-allocate the multiplier outputs that need to be read when computing the sums MJA2 as shown here. The pre-allocated node outputs are color-coded in the graph on the right. A critical stage in building an efficient folded multiplier is finding a valid modular schedule. The schedule needs to respect the data dependencies while also accounting for operation latencies. Additionally, in order to meet the throughput requirement of having a new operation issued every nine cycles, the multiplier unit must be kept busy at all times. We bootstrap our schedule to meet this requirement. We first try to schedule node M to M2, which has the longest data dependency, depending on the completion of two chained additions. The first node in the chain is scheduled on adder 0 at time 0. The second node in the chain is also scheduled on adder 0. This needs to wait for the completion of the first node and can therefore only be scheduled after AL plus two cycles. Here, AL stands for adder latency and the additional two cycles are for writing A to memory and reading it back. So for AL equals four cycles, B can be scheduled at time six. Respecting the data dependency distance, now the node M to M2 can be scheduled at cycle 12 on the multiplier unit. Next, we want to schedule multipliers M0, M2 and M1, M2, both which depend on the execution of the node merged M0, M1, A0, A1. This node is scheduled on adder 1 at cycle 0. Meeting the data dependency distance, nodes M0, M2 and M1, M2 are scheduled at time steps 10 and 11. Similarly, we schedule at time steps 8 and 9, nodes M2, 0 and M2, M1, which both depend on the completion of merge node A0, A1. The final four nodes are scheduled from time steps 4 to 7. It can be observed that the multiplications are scheduled in a continuous block, thus the objective of bootstrapping the schedule has been met. Next, we need to complete the schedule for all remaining nodes in the graph. We note that completing the modular schedule is part of the solution iteration loop together with completing the storage allocation. In other words, for each storage allocation we try to find a valid modular schedule. Completing the schedule involves finding schedule times for the remaining adder and subtractor nodes while meeting the data dependency distances. The found schedule times must, for each functional unit, be unique modular 9. Additionally, since storage elements may feed multiple FUs, the additional constraint that, for each storage element, the read times modular 9 are unique must also be imposed. Arriving at a solution that meets the above constraints may be done in multiple ways. Our solution starts with an as soon as possible schedule and explores schedules where nodes may be shifted up in schedule by at most 8 cycles. The 106 cycle modular schedule of a 2048 bit multiplier based on a 4 cycle adder and a 21 cycle multiplier is shown here. On the x-axis we show the schedule time, on the y-axis we show the functional units. The valid modular schedule is shown in light blue. The schedule has the property that it can be shifted up by 9 positions, wrapping around the modular schedule length of 108 cycles, and not overlap execution with an existing instance. The green schedule times of operations starting at 9 cycles later are now shown. The schedule times for operation which start yet another 9 cycles later is shown in pink. Note that the final addition has wrapped around the modular length but still doesn't overlap with the existing operations. We now show the rest of 
the operations. Note that the multiply utilization across the modular length is 100%, while the adder subtractors are each idle 12 cycles of 108, which yields an utilization ratio of 88%. The functioning of the core is shown with this timing diagram. After a reset cycle, operations are fed into the core together with a valid signal every 9 cycles. The output corresponding to the first set of inputs becomes available 106 cycles later. After another 9 cycles, the output corresponding to the second set of inputs is available, and so on. The full architecture of the folded integer multiplier is shown here for one instance of a valid configuration. It is based on the three functional units already described and the storage elements associated with them. Multiplexer pairs are present on the inputs of the three functional units. Each matching set of multiplexer signals corresponds to one operation. It can be seen that the 16 add sub nodes are split evenly between the two adders, whereas the multiplier input multiplexer has nine inputs, each corresponding to one multiplication operation in the operation graph. The static schedule indicates precise control signal values at each time step. These control signals are read from a ROM which is driven by a modulo counter. A final optimization is required in order to reduce the number of registers in each storage element. For the 108 cycle modulo schedule, 12 computations are simultaneously alive in the architecture at different completion stages. Note that 12 is the ratio of 108, the modulo length, divided by 9 with storage writes from a functional unit varying between 4 and 8 the total number of writes across 12 concurrent threads easily exceeds the 32 element mlab sweet spot we make use of an advanced compiler technique called register allocation where we construct a graph for each storage element the nodes of the graph correspond to writes to the storage elements and an edge exists between two such nodes if their liveness overlaps. Next, a simple graph coloring technique is applied such that no two neighboring nodes are colored in the same color. The graph shown here corresponds to a multiplier storage. It can be observed that the number of colors is less than 32, whereas the node count is well above 32. Using this simple register allocation optimization technique, we have been able to reduce all storage elements to single depth M labs for all configurations of adder latency and multiplier latency we tested. Finally, we turn to the performance of our approach and we show here results for a 2048 bit multiplier on both ARIA 10 and Stratix 10. Please note that the paper contains a much more extensive set of results. In terms of performance, we note that for ARIA 10, our implementation consumes slightly less than 41,000 ALMs and 135 DSPs, while maintaining a high FMAX and a throughput of 1 ninth the full rate throughput. For completeness, we also show resource utilization of the building blocks, notably a 33 cycle. 514 bit multiplier that requires 135 DSPs and a 4 cycle add or subtract the unit. Although a number of related works exist which have implemented 2048 bit multi cycle multipliers, comparing against these is not always easy due to the mix of throughput and resource utilization ratios. Although admittedly not perfect, we have proposed the metric time t times dsp to measure the efficiency of an implementation. Here time is closely correlated to throughput and not latency. It can be seen from the results table that with this metric our implementation is at least one order of magnitude better than the next implementation. Finally, we believe we have demonstrated the technique that allows building n-bit wide multipliers around a single n over 4 bits wide multiplier kernels. We have shown that the current approach scales to 2048 bits, size required for the cryptographic primitives in RSA 2048. Our proposed approach uses a best-in-class Karatsuba algorithm for the multiplier decomposition that reduces to 9 the number of multiplications required compared to the 16 for the schoolbook algorithm. For an equally efficient modular schedule, this by itself increases the throughput by 70%.
coupled with a tight modular schedule where no multiplier slots are wasted, this results in a very efficient folding multiplier architecture. This is confirmed by our proposed metric, which shows more than one order of magnitude improvement over previous works. Thank you for your attention.